In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement stunning animations within your Flutter application using Lottie. Lottie is one of the largest animations database in the world, and it's an excellent resource for developers looking to implement animations within their applications. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have an application where you'll be running an animation of two birds clapping with each other, and you'll also learn how to programmatically run animations for Lottie by clicking on this floating action button and then a confetti animation appearing. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to be talking about are the dependencies for for this tutorial. The only thing that you need to install as a package within your Flutter application is going to be the Lottie package. And as a side note, links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video, as well as a link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. So let's copy the Lottie dependency. Let's come back to our application. Let's go to pubspec.yaml, then come down to where it says dependency and paste in the Lottie dependency. Then I'll let Flutter pub gets do it magic. And while this is happening, what I'm going to be doing is now actually just giving a test run to my application to make sure that everything works as intended and there are no build issues. While that's going on, I'm going to let you guys know that you can come to app.lottiefiles.com and create a new account here. And once you've registered an account, log into your account, and then you're going to be presented with this home page. Here, what you can do is actually go to the section which says free community animations because these are the animations that you can implement for free without paying anything to Lottie and then click on the view more button. This is going to take you to a website called lottiefiles.com forward slash featured and here you can take a look at all of the animations that Lottie has to offer. What I'm going to be doing is just showcasing you guys what you can do to actually get access to animations. Let's just say that I want to show an animation for waiting within my application. So for that what I can do is maybe type in waiting into the search bar search for it and then what's basically going to happen is that it's going to show me all of the different animations that are available on the Lottie database that I can add. So we can see that there's this bird thing that we can add that's the one that I like of this word waiting. So I can click on it. And once I click on the actual animation, a pop-up is going to appear. So what we're going to be doing here is that we can actually change the color of our animation here to select a new color palette. You can, for example, select this color palette, that'll change it, but I'll reset it to the default one. And once you've selected the color palette to your liking, you can click on the download button. What download is going to ask you to do is save this animation to a workspace. So it'll automatically create a workspace for you. Just add this actual animation to that workspace and once this is done it'll take you back to the actual website that you came from which is app.lottiefiles.com and here what you can do is now actually download the Lottie JSON file for this actual animation. So the two animations that I want to implement I am going to be going back to app.lottiefiles.com to my workspace for my first project and here what I'm going to be doing is actually downloading the Lottie JSON files for the two animations that I like. So in my case, I want to download these birds clapping. So I'll click on that, then download the Lottie JSON. And then what I'm going to be doing after that is that I'll go back and I will select the next one, which is this confetti animation, and then click on Lottie JSON and download it. So once I have all of these animations downloaded, I will minimize my browser window and we can come back to Flutter. Here, what I'm going to be doing is creating a new folder within the root of my project, and I'm going to call this assets. Underneath of this, I'm going to create a new folder called animations. And then what I'm going to be doing is opening this folder up in Finder. Then what I'm going to be doing is actually just dragging and dropping these animations in to my actual directory. So what I'm going to be doing is copying the confetti.json and ducks.json animations. You can rename the animation JSON file to whatever you like. I renamed them to my liking, which is the confetti one for the confetti, the ducks one for the ducks. And now under my assets animations folder, I have the confetti file and the ducks.json file. So now we have the animations within our Flutter project. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'll stop running my application, come to pubspec.yaml, go down to the section which says assets under Flutter, and then basically add this directory to make these animations available to my actual project. So I'm going to do assets, forward slash, and then animations, forward slash, like so, and do command save. And that's pretty much it. So with this done, we can actually come back to our project and start running the main.dart file. And now everything should work and we should be able to access our Lottie animations through the code from the actual folder that we've put them in. 
So now that the application is running, let's implement the code. So to implement the code, I have my homepage class, which is a stateful widget, bare bones, the build function just returns a scaffold for now. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is that for my scaffold, I'm going to define the body property, and I'm gonna say it's going to be a call to a function called build UI, like so. Then once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is coming down saying that we'll return a widget for this function, it'll be called build UI, and then I'll open it up. Within this function, for now what I'm going to be doing is returning a center widget because I'm going to be rendering the animation of the ducks clapping in the center of the screen. So I'll place my Lottie animation widget within a center widget, add a child to it, and then this child is going to be Lottie. And then we can define the actual constructor. So we can actually load Lottie file from assets, from a file on our system, from memory, and from the networks. So in this case, we want to load asset files so i'm going to do lottie.assets but the logic remains the same regardless of the source that you get your animation from so in this case now we can define the asset so the asset if you remember correctly was assets forward slash animations and then forward slash it's going to be ducks.json like so and then do command save so if i do this you're going to see that now the duck animation is appearing on the screen and it's running as i want it to so the next thing that I'm going to be doing is just showcasing you guys some generic parameters that you have on these constructors to change the behavior of your animations. The one that's really useful is the repeat option that allows you to repeat animations once they end. So by default, it's true. If we set this to false, to command save, then what you're going to see is that the animation run once and stops. If I set this to true, then what's going to happen is that the animation keeps looping. Besides this, we have a reverse option as well. This basically, as the name implies, reverses the animation. So if I do reverse true, then it just reverses the animation. Um, and we're going to be removing it. And the last thing that I'm going to be showcasing you guys is how you can adjust the size of the animation. So those are using the width property and the height property that are available on the actual Lottie widget. So I'm going to set these to 250 and 250 to command save and this decreases the size of the ducks. So now that this is done, this is how to implement basic animations by just using Lottie files within your Flutter application if you do not want any control on them. But if you want control over your animations, you want to maybe run them programmatically, then the next section is for you where we're going to be adding the confetti now. So to add the confetti, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm actually going to be taking my center widget and I'm going to be refactoring it and I'm going to be wrapping this with a column. So a column has children. Then I'm going to be changing this column to be a stack. And what the stack basically allows us to do is that it allows us to play widgets one on top of another. So what I want is all of the actual duck animations to be below the actual confetti animation. So that's why I'm using a stack. And then the children in the stack, starting from the zeroth index, are at the very bottom, while the children at the last index is at the very top. So now what I'm going to be doing after this is that I'm going to be adding a new widget here. And this is going to be Lottie.asset. And then this is going to be the asset, which is the confetti one. So let's do assets slash animations. And then forward slash, and I'm going to do confetti.json, like so. Do command save. And there we go. We now have the confetti animation appearing as I want it to. So now that this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is actually showcasing you guys how we can actually adjust the behavior for this animation. So the first thing I'm going to be doing now is that I'm going to be setting the width and the height property here to be this, as you can see, so the height of the screen and the width of the screen. Then once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be setting the fit property for this to be box fit, and then I'm going to do dot cover. So this is basically going to make the animation cover the entire width and height. And once this is done, the last thing that I'm going to be doing is setting the repeat property to false and then do command save. So now the animation happens once and then it stops. So now what I want to do is use some kind of a mechanism through which I can programmatically run this animation when I'd like. So how do we do this? Well, for that, we need to give our Lottie animation an actual controller. So if you actually go to the constructor and try to add a controller property, you can see that we can pass an animation controller here, and then that can allow us to actually control the actual way our animation runs. So what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be now going to the top of my homepage state class, and I'm gonna say that this is going to implement a single ticker provider state mixin. And once this is done, then what I'm going to be doing is that I am basically going to be creating a variable, which is going to be final type animation controller called controller. 
Then once this is done, I'm going to create the init state function for my home page state class. And then underneath of this init state function, I'm going to be setting my actual controller to a new instance of an animation controller. So to do that, I'll do controller equals to a new instance of our animation controller and we sick property is going to be this. And that's the reason why we had to basically add the single ticket provider state mixin to our home page state class. And then after this, I'm going to define the duration for our animation. So how long do we want our animation to run? So in this case, you can experiment with it. What I'm going to do is use durations dot extra long for, and that's pretty much it. That's all we had to do. So now that this is done, I'm going to take my controller and I'm going to pass that to my Lottie animation and do command save and then i'm going to restart my application because to begin with the actual controller is not going to be initialized so just restart the application and then finally we're going to be implementing a dispose function on our actual widget as well and then before the super class gets disposed what i'll do is actually dispose the animation controller and this is just a good practice so now that this is done, we are almost at the very end. So the last thing that I'm going to be doing is coming to my scaffold, adding a floating action button. And my floating action button is just going to be a normal floating action button widget. And then on the on press property, for now it's going to be an empty function. And then finally, what I'm going to be doing is adding a child to my floating action button, which is going to be an icon, which is going to say dot play arrow, like so. Then I'll come to my main dart dart file just for the color scheme, change this to blue, just to keep it in line with all of the apps color scheme, come back to the home page. And now we're ready to actually run the logic within the on pressed off our floating action button that we want to run our animation. So to run my animation, all I'm going to be doing is creating a variable called ticker and going to be setting that equal to underscore controller dot forward. And what this is going to do, if we go back to my application and run it, it's going to run the confetti animation but you see that it run once but it doesn't run again and the reason for that is because now we need to reset our controller so that's why i actually saved the return property which is a ticker future from the actual controller dot forward function into a variable called ticker and then what i do is that i basically say that when the ticker gets completed then what i want to do is that i want to basically reset my controller so for that i'm going to do underscore controller dot reset and this is basically going to allow me to run my animation again so now that this is done, if I click on the play button, you can see that the confetti animation happens. Click on it again and it happens again. Click on it again and it happens again. And that's pretty much all you need to know to actually implement Lottie animations within your Flutter application. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep going, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.